Dear Diary, I thought I was talking to this really hot chick online. It seems that she was a fake person, not a real person. I may have revealed some intimate, some might say incriminating things about myself that I shouldn't have. And now she's threatening to post all this incriminating shit online and destroy me. Dear Diary, am I totally f***ed? Catfishing on the Sunset Strip. You know, thinking about it now, years later, you think to yourself, fuck, how could I be so stupid, right? But the reality is no one is really as they seem, not on social media anyway. These so-called beauty apps that women use and abuse, they don't really look like that. You know that, right? Unsightly moles, vanished. Turkey neck, wipe clean. There's probably an app for jowls be gone, thunder thighs be gone, a duck lip inflator, a hair extension expander, looking at yourself every day, 300 times an hour, checking your notifications on the machine. You're on the machine, lurking, scrolling, liking, bloop, bloop, bloop. So of course, if you could import a bunch of 21st century technology to fix those 10,000 imaginary imperfections you think you have, you'd do it, right? Here I am. I'm going down this rabbit hole again. I promised myself I wouldn't do this, but here I am and I'm doing it again. And then there's all those pics. That's right, here, a little secret people. A lot of my rock and roll brethren are guilty of being pic trawlers. They'll send out a thousand or so bubble bath pics of themselves to a bunch of women and friends of their friends to see if they can get a, whoosh, a few bites middle-aged rocker guys flexing their six-inch muscle on camera, sporting that stupid shit-eating grin. It's fucking weird. And the bubble baths. What's up with the fucking bubble baths? Is that like a fetish? Do girls get turned on by middle-aged flabby dudes in a tub of bubbles? And if I told you who was guilty of sending out these pics, you wouldn't be able to take them or their music seriously ever again. It's enough to make your brown eyes blue. Time to go back to 2003 when the world was young. Let's go. So before Facebook, before Instagram, even before YouTube, there was this thing called MySpace, a place to find friends. It should have been called Space, a place to get f***ed, a pre-Tinder Tinder, if you will. The old sailor's cliche of a girl in every port Totally possible now with MySpace. You could not only hook up nationally, but internationally as well through the magic of those old school places called the Internet Cafe. I started chatting with a person who I thought was one thing, but turned out to be something completely different. See, musicians are vulnerable. We want to be loved. That's why Spotify has such a strong pull. Let's get more people to hear your music, man, and then you'll be loved. No one wants to hear that they suck. We all want to hear that we are real. As the tour went on, the internet chatting became more intimate. In the middle of a European tour in some shabby internet cafe in Istanbul, Turkey, the lines of reality start to fray. You're speaking more freely now and openly, and you're forgetting that, in fact, you're talking to a complete and utter stranger. But it all came crashing down eventually. It had to, because in order for this fake person to keep the illusion going, they have to stay in that weird limbo. See, the relationship can never be consummated in person. You can never ever meet this person because then the jig would be up. At a certain point, even the dumbest of the dumb realize it's a scam. You know, you start to pull away. They try to pull you back in. Hey, baby, haven't heard from you in a while. You get more distant. They start to lash out and so on. So I ended it, or so I thought I did, until later on, I revisited the same weirdo chat room that I met this fake person in in the first place. And there she was, latching on to another rocker guy. I saw what was up and I tried to reach out to this guy. Dude, I said, She's not real. I've been through this. And there was silence. Bro, I'm trying to help you. 
The girl you think you're talking to is fake. And I remember his reply. It was so cocky. I found out later that he was some local musician in some small town band. He said to me, and I quote, you're just jealous she's with me now, man. Okay, you'll see. So I forgot about it. Time went on. And then a few months later, I received an email from this very guy apologizing to me. I'm sorry, man, he said. You were right. I should have listened to you. These people are ruining my life. Then he showed me a picture of them. I mean her, the woman. Turned out this person was a husband and wife team out of Oklahoma. Right out of the hills have eyes, man. It was Leatherface and his wife, Rocky Dennis. The guy told me that he was coerced into doing some crazy shit to himself in a bubble bath. <laughs> there it is again, the fucking bubble bath. He made a video of himself pleasuring the old gherkin and he actually sent it to them. Kaboom! They not only posted the video online, but they also sent it to his workplace and to his wife. Now his job and his marriage were in jeopardy. Jesus. I remember reading this and feeling a small twinge of pity for this poor guy, Mr. Bubbles. I felt bad, but I also thought, you know, I would never do that. It's been over 20 years since MySpace and those accursed chat rooms, but you know, I have to assume that the shit still goes on. In fact, I read on Facebook just the other day about this very same shit happening to some other rocker. Lonely men, vulnerable musicians reaching out to the internet and getting their dicks bitten off. I guess there is no statute of limitations on being stupid. It can happen to the best of us. I write this today from the perspective of a married man who cannot even conceive of a time when he was single. But there was a time, a time before time, when your humble narrator had zero control of his libidinous behavior. When I first moved to Las Vegas in 2004, I didn't realize that the fucking bars never closed. You could literally drink all night. I got in a lot of trouble back then. Good trouble, fun trouble, but trouble nonetheless. I can remember going out to a club one night and every table, 20 tables deep, every table had a girl at it that I had slept with. It was like a giant game of battleship. Table four, hit. Table six, hit. Drinking and cavorting with no emotions, no feelings. Is that how it is for single people today? I see these horrific TikTok videos of women crying into their phones that they can't find a man, so I have to assume that it's true. I want to tell all these poor women, the internet is not your friend. The internet is not your confidant. It's a gigantic vampire sucking all the life out of you for clicks and views. All the likes you seek, they're not real. All the prayer emojis, they're not real. So I don't envy the young. They seem just as confused as I was when I was plugged into the hookup machine. You know what? Be grateful for what you have. I say this over and over. Be grateful, people. If you're married, stay married. Work it out. Learn to compromise. As I've said before, the grass is not greener. It's a cold, dark, frosty brown. You can't f a ghost from the internet and you can't marry an app. Remember that. Shro pal, just so rockin' and rollin', and we'll see you next time.